All right, so today I'm gonna take LinkedIn Excel test and see if I can actually pass it. So I guess we'll find out if I know anything or I'm a fraud. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and click on this. I have some worries about this test. I'm not sure what's gonna be on it. Hopefully it's not gonna have some stupid questions about formattings and things like that. Also, I'm worried about like version differences when they ask you something that could be possible in one version, but not in the other. We'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna click on this Microsoft Excel. See, it tells me 15 multiple choice questions. I have one and a half minute per question and I need to score in the top 30% to earn the badge, which I don't care about. I just made this uh, fake account so I can see how this works out. So I'm not gonna practice, I'm just gonna go right to it. Hopefully I'll be able to pass it. I'm curious if I'm allowed to open Excel while I'm doing this. One and a half minute per question, that seems to be quite a long time. Anyways, so let's click start and see what we get. So which value is returned when you enter this function into cell G5? G5, so G5 is gonna be this one right here. So it says if E5, basically this, if this is greater or equal to two, which it is, I guess I don't have to check the second or anymore because the E is already greater than two. So then it's gonna just give us this monitor closely. So hopefully I didn't miss anything. So seems to be no errors in the formula. So we'll just do this and hit next. All right, so which function when entered into cell B7 calculates the range for average call length? Okay, whatever that means. So B7, so let's see what's in B7 here. So calculates the range of average call length. So this is call length. So I guess we should just get a range. Oh, okay, I see. So basically it will be the difference between max and min, I guess. That's what we call a range here. So then it would be B2 through B6, the max minus the min, the same thing. So this should take care of it. Hopefully I got that right. I'm not sure about this one. Uh, next, let's see, which function when entered into cell G7, again, G7, G7 here, allows you to determine the sum total of annual sales for market region 18 and greater. Market region 18 or greater. So I guess that's gonna be some sort of sum if function. So let's take a look. Uh, it says in G7, right? Yeah, G7. So well, I guess it doesn't matter where you enter the function. It's going to be the same thing. So if we do some if, so did they do some ifs? No, some if. So in some if, I think some range goes last, which is kind of weird always, uh, but I hate it. So therefore, we need this sum range G column to be the last range. So it looks like it's going to be this one. So G2 through G6, that's the sum range. So F would be this market region, and we basically want it to be greater than or equal 18. 18 and greater, yeah, it seems to be the right one. So let's hit next and see what's next. All right, what is colors inventory referring to here? So that should be table column in this case. The inventory column in colors table. Yeah, that seems to be the correct thing. The colors worksheet in the inventory workbook. No, the inventory worksheet in colors workbook. No, and 
named range. No, named ranges cannot include square brackets. So it's the first one. Next, how can you drill down into a pivot table to show details? Uh, this is just double click basically. Select the cell into which you want to drill down, right click and select drill down. Maybe that's a possibility, I don't know. Select the cell into which you want to drill down and double click. That seems to be definitely right. And select the cell into which you want to drill down, right click and select show details, summary page, uh, select the cell. See, uh, like this is what I consider a meaningless question. What difference does it make? This doesn't show like you know something, it just shows that you remember how you got there. Anyways, it should be this one. Next, from which field list was the pivot table created? From which field list was the pivot table created? Okay, let's see. Uh, so it should basically have amount in values and then it should have two things in rows. What seems to be event and donor maybe? This is really small. How am I supposed to see this? So let's see. This seems to be some amount. That's right. Uh, donor event. This is not right. It should be event and then donor. So this would not be it. This would not be it. This would not be it. There we go. So event donor, some amount in values that should get us this pivot table. So this first one, then break it down to the second one in rows both, and then they change it to like uh, show as uh, design tabular form or something. It's one of those. Maybe this is not the tabular, this is the other one outline, I guess. Anyways, let's hit next before I run out of time. In this pivot table, the continuous variable weight is shown in the row field. Another continuous variable is in some values field. It is important to reduce a long list of body weights to a smaller set of weights categorized. How do you do this? Group it. Use if, no, click row labels arrow and then select group. Right click on any row field in pivot table and select group. That should be, basically you just right click on one of these things right here and you should be able to do that. Hopefully I understand what they said. Okay, let's hit next. Let's see what's next. Monthly revenues for 2019 are entered in B2 through M2. B2, M2. To get year-to-date running total revenues, what formula should you enter in B3 and autofill to M3? B3, autofill to M3. Okay, so to get year-to-date running total revenues. So it should basically sum up this and this, I guess. So let's see, it should probably be this one. So take a look, so B2 and then B2 and then B2 is locked, B, so if I go right, B will stay, yeah, this should work. So next, which is a valid Excel formula? Okay, interesting, so there should be an invalid one. So this one is definitely valid, uh, this square brackets is not valid, I guess, uh, this, because there's no operator after seven is not valid. This because there's no operator after parentheses closed is not valid. So this is the only valid formula here. Okay, which Excel feature allows you to hide rows or columns with an easily visible expand collapse? Oh, this, I guess that's group. Cut and paste filtering grouping. Uh, let's read this again. Hide rows or columns with an easily, yeah, that's grouping. So that's where you go under data and you group. Okay, that's that. Cell D2 contains the formula 
this one b2 minus c2 so wage minus deduction okay what is the fastest way to copy the formula into cell d3 through d501 not the flash fill click d2 field handle and drag it down double click this this is one of those tricky questions see if i double click on that d2 usually that should work but the problem is if we have some weird data set and there are some blanks in the middle depending on a version of excel you're on it may go all the way it may stop halfway through so this is probably what it is but it could also be this one depending on the situation so let's just go with this and do next and see what's next this data needs to be sorted by group then by last name okay then by first name how do you accomplish this i guess you just sort this select any cell in a data set in the data tab click sort button add two levels to the default level populate sort by fields in the order group last name first name uh group so that all sounded about right this one so let's see what are the next ones select cell in a group column then sort select cell in the last name column then sort and then in a first name column and then sort uh what was it it's saying group then last name then first name so if i was doing it with a regular sorting it should go the opposite way you should do first name last name and then group so then this wouldn't work so then highlight the entire data set in data tab click sort the headers appear drag the headers into order group last name first name i don't think headers appear but again this is one of the stupid questions what difference does it make if they appear or not uh time expired see as i was talking through this i <laughs> forgot i'm on time so that should be the right one but i i'm not gonna get that one apparently uh, what feature can you use to populate b2 through b7 with the number from each sentence in a2 to a7 b2 through b7 this is going to be flash fill so 44240 so there you go i guess this time i'm going to hurry up because as i talk through this i'm going to end up timing out again you are determining percentage growth by dividing growth by sales okay this by this okay which excel function would you use to avoid div zero error if error i guess yeah well this is interesting because divide uh, i think if you are in power pivot divide has an option to basically not get those errors but the regular divide i think acts the same as division so we're gonna go with if error what excel feature can you use to automatically format cells that are greater than a specified value with designed field and text colors uh, i guess that's going to be conditional formatting yeah that's that view results so i definitely messed up one of them i'm in top five percent of 13 million people so i think i just missed one but then i don't know maybe i did some mistakes i wish it told you like what questions you got right badge no thank you so there's no way to check the results so there you go thanks for watching please subscribe and i'll see you in the next video